So welcome to another Straight Talking Property podcast with myself, uh, Ashley Banfield. We've got Brett in Singapore, Brett Allegra Wood from Brett's Property Rant, soon to be uh, Rant Education. Is that right, mate? Well, that's, uh, that's the education company, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're doing another thing, yeah, good. Uh, a regular now, we've got Emmanuel Ezekiel on his uh, terrace in his penthouse with the sun behind him and the blue sky. How's it going? It's all good, thank you. All yeah, good. That's nice. And we've got Jimmy London with his uh, massive headphones on. How are you, mate? <laughs> I'm all good, mate. Thank you. All good. And by the way, how is the missus? Because I've seen a few things on social media. You tag in sort of lion's tails to her, tying her up, <laughs> and she can't get out, and uh, generally so, all around just annoying her. And I can see she's not actually sitting behind her in the office at the moment. No, she's not behind me now. So this this is her desk, yeah. So No, I, I'm a bit of a wind-up. I'll get that off the old man. I'm always playing jokes on people. and uh, that, that, That's what happens when you're locked down. Yeah, I you know. Create yeah. more entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Mate, it is actually, it's actually good to watch, yeah. I share a few of those with, uh, yeah, with people. Uh, you might get some uh, weird sort of likes on your social media at some stage. And we've got Chris Denman on the sound as always. A special congratulations from all of us and all the listeners, I'm sure, <laughs> to the arrival of Iris on the Thank 26th you. of April. Thank we all want to so know. Much. We all want to know who's the daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Not you. <laughs> the, the evidence does really point well to me, slept, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're born in the corner. Well, welcome to the two kid club, mate. It actually gets harder from here, just so you know. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm right, like, leave your voice to it. Go talk property. <laughs> Good, well done, mate. I think I think 26th of April. Yeah, I think we discussed this same same uh, same date as my mum. So happy birthday to mum, God. And Mother's Day coming up in Australia soon. Don't forget, Brett. Yep, and Singapore. Son. And Singapore as well. Good. So listen, let's let's crack on. Um, lockdown's been interesting. We've had lots of work done at home, etc., etc., etc. Outside, obviously, nothing can be done inside. My wife's been trying to. Uh, she's painted my new office, which is why I'm out here. And um, for somebody who hates painting, she's doing a lot of it. Now, what we want to talk about today is, I guess it's it's still key to be talking about the coronavirus because it's still here. Although Boris Johnson uh, is going to announce on Sunday, as of Monday, there will be some release of um, lockdown uh, being sort of loosened, if you like. So I don't know what that will be, etc. Now, I also know that because we're nursery owners is that my kids, my kids are going back to school on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the next month. Oh, wow. Can't say how uh, upset I am for that with homeschooling. <laughs> it's been absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm sure most people will resonate with that. Um, so she she can now do that because she has to now go go back and has been asked to go back and start planning for um, the end of lockdown to be phased in. So it's all good, positive news. So in relation to that and the positive news that we are, if you like, on the way out of lockdown um, in, in the UK, and I know Australia is, they're hitting zeros in Western Australia, zero cases, zero deaths and all that sort of stuff. So I just want to, I just want us all to chip in and help people from our experience on how they should be operating as a current property investor or budding property investor in the current coronavirus lockdown and what we should be doing after this all ends. So that's the subject for today. And volunteer, please, of who would like to chip in first. Um, and uh, um, I, let's do I'm, this I'm around happy. your expertise. 
So I, I, I'm happy to chip in to this, but this podcast really would not be long enough to cover all the different things that we need to talk about specifically. So the first thing I'd like to, to say is that every single property investor, business owner, should be availing themselves of all the support packages that the government have put in place first and foremost, whether it be the business interruption loan, the Sybil loan, the, the quick start loan, or all the other benefits that the government have put in place to help to shore up your business. That's first and foremost. You've got to look at where you are now before you can look forward. So the first thing is looking at all of those areas because there really are some amazing things the government done. So Sybil loan, as I said, uh, it is fantastic. The, the new startup effectively booster loan that literally you go on your bank account. Oh, Brett will add something to this because I know this is one of his areas. He's smiling away over there. So he's going to chip in in a second. So literally you go to your bank account uh, website. You go on the website. You go to business loan. You click on the loan. You make the application. And it really is as simple as that. It's effectively 25% of your turnover. So if you've had a rent roll of 100 grand a year, you can claim 25,000 to go back into your account to just help you shore up where you need to be. If you've got a you know, service accommodation where your turnover might be even higher. So you need to be looking at the different support packages the government put in place to you to allow you to do that. Um, if you're a landlord, you need to be communicating with your tenant to make sure they're not taking a payment holiday because they think it's free and going through all the steps that they need to do to prove and verify they have been affected by the coronavirus, not they're just going to take this as a payment holiday. So going through all the steps and all the measures that they that they need to do, and maybe uh, either through myself or Brett, we'll put a link at the bottom of this so they can actually click on to all the different benefits that, that the tenant should be claiming for, whether it be furloughed, if they're self-employed, um, universal credit, all the different things to avail themselves. So that's first and foremost. So I'll pass that on to you, Brett, now. I'll just chip in there as well, Ash, Ash here, just, just before we do. So we've got several businesses and we've applied for the bounce back loan, the BBLS from the government on all of our businesses, simply because there is still some uncertainty of when all of this may end. Um, you know, it could be in, in six weeks, could be in six months. We don't know. So, you know, my wife, even with the nursery and that type of thing, what we've done is we've claimed for the maximum amount that we can claim and we will leave that money in there because it is 12 months free money. You don't pay any interest for 12 months. So we'll say yeah. to ourselves, look, if we need it, then we'll use it. If we don't, we'll just pay it back and it hasn't cost us anything because the government takes care of all of the fees and all of their interest in that first year. Even if you do go to the 50 grand at 2.5%, I think it works out over six years that you only pay back 54 and a half thousand pounds. Now, another thing to that is you could be quite savvy. If you actually have loans now within your business and they could be more four or five. And I know some people have got business loans at 10, 11 percent, which is crazy money. Now, why wouldn't you take the money, pay those loans out and you've reduced your monthly payments and the amount of interest that you pay substantially? So that's my little bit. Over to you, Brett. Yeah, and, and 100%. Um, you can apply as, even if you've got properties in your own name, um, if you because effectively, buy to let is a business. It's being treated like a business, so therefore, um, you can apply. So I, I've actually, I've just applied for on my own name. Now, the only thing they said was because I've had the money coming in my own personal bank account, they won't allow that, but they've set up a special bank account where it's a commercial bank account. So you've just got to set that up. So there's a, an extra step if you've got it in your own name. So I'm actually applying through my company and I'm applying through my business for exactly that reason is that, you know, we don't know where we're going into. And I think it's better to have and, you know, not need and than to not have. And I think um, at 2.5%, you know, paying back over six years, getting that first year free, why not? I mean, literally it costs you nothing to apply. You know, it's free money for a year. And even if you do nothing but sit in an account, you know, um, Obviously, if you take it, you're going to have to pay it back. Um, but, you know, 50,000 bucks in my bank account is, uh, you know, I don't mind that. <laughs> so, I'll, I'll, so, yeah, I'll I think... so, so, so can, can, I, can I add something to that? Because um, I've, I've always been an advocate of not taking money for the sake of taking money because you've got to pay it back at some point. So if you're a business person, you know, this is a business loan to help you with your business. 
So if you're able to use this as a business loan to help you with your activity, to reduce your interest costs and actually do something of real benefit, not just to shore up your account. It's, it's supposed to be working capital to allow you to progress your business. That's what it should be used for, because a lot of people might take the money and they won't be able to pay it back in the future. So this is really for you to look at your cash flow, your assets and do it as a proper business proposition. Although it's interest free, make sure that you have a business strategy that allows you to pay it back. If it's not in the 12 months over the six year period that you're doing a proper business plan to do it, because otherwise people are just creating debt that they can't repay going forward. So I just want to put that sort of caveat there, if that's all right. And, that, and, and that's a very good point because what will happen is people think, oh, I'll borrow it in a limited company, I'll go and spend it on holidays or do whatever with it. Well, if you fold that company within whatever time the first year and you say to them, sorry, I couldn't pay it back, they will still push you as, um, as yourself and try to chase you for the money. Now, if you can't yes. show whether you're using Zero or QuickBooks or anything like that, you can't show the money trail of where all that money went, i.e. business expenses. They will chase you personally mm -hmm. because you spent it on personal stuff. So be very, very careful not to try and buck the system and get yourself in a lot of trouble. Yeah, but I, I think the, the one of the things too is you've got these opportunities to actually turn this around and use it as a positive thing. And I think as a business person... Yeah. If somebody's giving you cheap money like that, that you can employ, and, and you're right, Emmanuel, you know, don't, if you're not disciplined and you're just going to go spend it on holidays, well, you know, more for you. But the reality is, if you can find something to do with it, I mean, one of the things I'm doing right now is pivoting a number of businesses where we've been going this direction and we're sort of pivoting there. Like, we're, we're just in our London office, we're handing the keys back to our London office, we've given notice, so we've got, we've got three months' notice, but um, we're moving out because we want to go into a bigger office where the guys get more, not that we want more people, actually we want less people in the office, we want more space and we want a bit more of a funky office and that sort of thing. So, you know, we're doing that right now, taking the opportunity and why not? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a, there's a really key word that you used. I don't know if any of you guys noticed it, but you said you're taking the money to employ it, which means you're going to make it work. That's a really key yeah. word. So you're taking mm -hmm. the money you're employing it, you're making your money go out and work for you. And that's really key. So people that take the money are going to use it to employ it in their business to grow and to shore up the business. And that's really the key word and what's what I was trying to, the point I was trying to get across. Mm. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. So Jimmy, any anything from you, Re, the pub and that type of thing, other businesses? What have you yeah. sort of done around the, uh, the loan? <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I obviously that was uh, live on Monday, wasn't it? We could apply for that. So the same thing for me. Yeah. I've, I've done it for my property rental business. I've done it for the pubs. I've done it for the hotels. Um, I've done it also for my, mine and my, my missus's holding company. We, we've just applied for it all. If we use it, great. If we don't, then I'm going to look at, yeah, making the money work for me because, yes, it is free money and it's great great to have that. Um, but, you know, I, I, I've got some people I know that have took large business loans out that are paying 11, 12, you know, 16 odd percent, one of them was, mm. that I just said to him, look, apply for it, knock that off. It is, you know, it's not rocket science. And, you know, some people's like, oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, I didn't see that there. So, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I, it's, it's like how thick are some people. But, um, you know, I've, 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 there, there's people that I know that in the rent to rent business um, that opened their companies over a year ago that have only got one property that didn't have a lot of cash flow that, you know, maxed out all their credit cards because they were starting on such a low budget. I said, well, look, you're, you're, you're going to be liable for, for some money here, which potentially could be another deal for you. So, you know, putting it out there for, for, for the people that's starting out, it, it's a nice boost. I always say turn a disaster into a profit. And um, I mean, look at us with a pub. Um, yes, we, we took a bit of a kick exactly. in the teeth with that one at the moment. But I know for a fact that, you know, everything, as soon as it all goes back, we're going to come back bigger and better. Um, there's going to be more bookings with, with uh, and I also think traveling uh, with, with the service accommodation side of things. I live down on the on the coast, uh, down in Whitstable, and um, all the holiday homes I can see in all, all along the, the Kent coast now are just going to be getting booked up from from the next month or so because pe I can't see people flying at the moment. I think it's going to take a while for holidays to get back together and the whole, um, you know, sort of 
get booking the family holiday and, and that. So I, I think the UK as a holiday destination for us and thing, things happening, um, I think it's, just, you know, it's, it's going to be booming. Yeah, especially, yeah, I agree with that because, you know, the people that we mentor with SA and hotels and stuff, we are all <laughs> pushing now down a route of staycations for the next two months at least. Yeah. So, yeah. and, and, there's, there, get... and there is a massive, massive opportunity there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, we've all taken a hit on the accommodation side, and I, I had a couple of things lined up that unfortunately didn't come through with some nurses staying there. It all sounded good on the last podcast, but when they've actually, you know, come come through and saying that they want it now for three months, two months, one month, now we're noticing such a dip in the virus that I know that Airbnb, I know that Premier Inn now are losing their bookings that they had with all the. Um, uh, all, all, all the NHS staff because I've spoke to them. I've spoken to our council, the one that we've got the pub in Haringey, Lewisham, Greenwich. All these councils now are, are, are you know, the the um, sorry, not the not the councils, the the hospitals. They're all saying that they don't need the accommodation now, which is a good thing in a way. You know, it's like like they they they've, they've not used the Excel. Yes, they set the the Excel up and they spent millions on it. OK, yes, it was, you know, sort of money spent, but you'd rather it be not being used than it being used because it's a positive for us. So, Can I give you yeah. some input from um, the other group of hotels, Shepherdcock's group of hotels? They've mm-hmm. obviously got a number of hotels <laughs> they are going to have to plan for the reopening. And part of it is that you're going to have to have part of the guidelines is 24 hours uh, between the one booking and another and to show the room has been fully cleaned. So you might have to have yeah. Um, yeah, minimum, said, booking, yeah. m- minimum booking stays and maybe three, four, five nights. Uh, and also it said a floor day. at a time. It was saying a floor at a time to open, not the whole whole place. Um, so, I, I did read that yesterday. Yeah, so it, it could be a floor at a time or, could it, be, or it could be one side one side compared to the other. So they're trying to obviously keep the social distancing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, or it might be every other room. So it's looking at mm. your your accommodation and how you can plan it. So you actually might need a really good actuary to work out the optimum to actually do that for you to maximise it if you have you know, large accommodation. Yeah. 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 Good points. Um, yeah, because I mean ours is over three levels, Jimmy. So. Yeah. I don't know how you know maybe we do alternative rooms or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think the big thing is, is you know, you need to be planning now um, for what the next stage is. I mean, we, we've got Definitely. rid of the virus side, or not got rid of it, um, but we've got rid of the virus through the over the hump, and you know, so there's all the human tragedy. But now is the economic, and they're getting back into and opening back up. So mm. as a business, you know, I know I've spent a couple of days now where I've literally just been sitting here going, right, what do I need to consider? What are the aspects? You know, social distancing is only one part. It's like you know, how do you open a door that there's only one way in and yeah. one way out? Do you wipe it every time? Do you give them gloves to walk in and out? What about if it's out the door to the toilet? You know, and it's like, how do you go to the toilet? You know, do you have, you know, and it's all these sort of things where you go, bloody hell. Or do you assume that, okay, I'm going to take this risk, but not that risk? And, you know, it's, it's some hard questions. And um, in some ways, the government isn't giving us the detail. Maybe Boris will and he's holding him back till tomorrow, but... It seems like there's a lot of people who know a lot of stuff. Sunday, actually, Sunday. So, sorry, Sunday, yeah, you're right. Um, Sunday, but actually nothing's really set in stone right now. It's, it seems everybody's got a different opinion. I know I saw a letting agent opened up yesterday and, um, you know, said social distancing in one door, out the other, all that sort of stuff, and got a huge backlash <laughs> and closed today, you know. So mm, yeah. it's, it's the, hard the, right the, now. The, the, there's, there's, there's a couple of things that in terms of service accommodation that you could – and should be doing to be ahead of the market. So while we're on lockdown, I would cer- certainly say that you do a virtual tour of your properties, not with pictures, but a virtual tour. And during the virtual tour, you talk about that you have a professional company that's doing the professional cleaning. They come in that are certified. So to put you ahead of the other competition, you need to be able to stand out. And how you're going to stand out? One is presence in terms of showing your, your accommodation in the best light. So virtual tour would be really good. And a virtual tour, not only showing the property, but showing all the benefits you're talking about, the things that you have, like your Nespresso machines and your Siri and all the bits and pieces that you have that's over and above everybody else. And that will put you 
ahead of the service accommodation. So that's a freebie that you can start adding into your training, Ash. Yeah, thanks, mate. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that, 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 that's, that's the same with the uh, with, with, with my market, with the HMO side of things. I've got my viewing scale um, before lockdown to say, look, go around there and do virtual. To, to, even if it's just on your phone, just go around there, get the virtual done of the property because already we've got people that are wanting to move in as a like you know sort of the, the next couple of weeks so um she, she'd done five rooms already taken deposits and they've not even gone in the property so and it wow. goes the same with, with, with the service accommodation side yeah you know because people as soon as as soon as boris release oh you know now you can social uh with with 10 friends or with family things are going to start moving bookings are going to start coming in um so i've got to try and yeah. think where i'm going to find 10 friends mate <laughs> We've noticed um, it, we had probably through the first three weeks where actually probably the first week it was quite quiet in terms of tenants saying we're leaving, we can't pay, all that sort of stuff. Then we had sort of three weeks where we got absolutely slammed with tenants saying I can't pay, I'm not paying, I haven't got any money, I've lost my yeah. job, I furloughed, I, you know, all that. But actually what happened, and we probably had, I mean, we had at least 400 calls, 400 calls, um, that I, I was able to check on. But of those 400 calls, we've only got about 30 of those that have actually come through and followed through on filling out our form to say, actually, this is my hardship. This is, you know, everything I wanted to negotiate and that we've had to negotiate, which is, you know, compared to what we thought it might be. I mean, I did, mm. I did models for 30%, 50% and 80%, and it's working out as if, you know, negligible right now, which it's not negligible for the people who have suffered. I mean, the other the other side of it is not the people in hardship, but the people who have said, I'm leaving and given notice, which is the other side. So I've actually had two of my tenants say, I'm leaving. Now, one of them said, either give me a, a free period uh, until we go back out of lockout or else I'm handing my notice in. And I said, well, hand your notice in. I mean, that's one of the properties that I'm going to turn into a service apartment, which I chatted to you about, Ashley. But, um, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. so, so it actually hasn't come out as bad as it could have. Now, obviously, yeah. for the people who aren't getting paid and that, it's, it's bad. But so I think that's a good thing for getting back on the horse and, and opening back up again, is it actually hasn't been as bad, you know, from the medical perspective, but also from the unemployment perspective. Yeah, I, I was uh, quite shocked, to be honest, Brett, when... Um... I've got, I got over 230 of tenants and yeah. I, I, it was a bit of a scare because I just assumed, right, everyone's going to go, Jimmy, I've lost my job, I can't pay my rent and then my business goes from jump, <laughs> literally, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, I, 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 as much as you plan, you can't plan for 200 plus tenants to not pay their rent. It's, uh, you know, that's no. just ludicrous. So, so, yeah, so to be honest, I've probably got about, I'd say... Yeah, 12 possibly 15 now people that can't pay their rent and and that's you know I'm, i was quite that's massive quite that's, that's, that's yeah. awesome yeah i've that's got a awesome couple work. you know yeah i've got a couple where i've i've given the 80 percent rent because they're getting 80 percent wages um but yeah you know 12 to 15 people that can't pay pay their rent i'm i was quite pleased with that because it could have gone the other way which, like you said and, which to be yeah. fair when, and when i did my numbers when i was looking at it I actually did my numbers on what's our normal rate, which is about 3%. Mm. And then, you know, if you add to that, you know, it's it's no more than 10%, which is actually quite yeah. good. And a lot of those too, some of those are the self-employed people who are being furloughed, but they don't get their money until June for the furlough. June, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, they've said, listen, I can't pay now, but when the money comes in, I'll get it in. But even some of those have gone out and got the universal credit and ask for the advance payment. And then they, mm. they come back to us and say, oh, by the way, here's the money. So the government yeah. schemes are working, you know. Um, you know yeah. And actually, I've done a few videos of um, how to do, how to go online and do that because a lot of the tenants were like, you know, oh, I've got no money, I can't pay. And it's like, well, get on this site and do this and do that and apply. And the amount of times we've had people come back to it going, thank goodness for your video. You know, I've done that and they've, they've approved my universal credit or the, you know, whatever. So, it, you know, so... It's quite good, actually, that, that side of it. You know, it hasn't been anywhere near as where, bad. Where is, that, where, is, where is that website, Brett? Right? com forward slash COVID-19. Um, yep. And basically, it's got there's over 50 videos there that I've done since COVID started, basically, on everything to do with investors and even tenants and things like that. There's right. a whole heap of us. Right. Yeah. We'll check that so, out. We're, we're, 
so we've we've covered most of what's going on at the moment. So let's let's fast forward. Let's let's fast forward two months, three months. What are we prepping for? What are we doing now? What are, what do what do we? I mean, no one's got a crystal ball or whatever like that. Um, but you know, what are we planning for at the moment for the next two to three months? So I'll, I'll start. So I've got different different businesses. So my my property management business, we're going on an acquisition. We're gonna we we think there's a lot of landlords who are pissed off with their agents because they haven't even heard from them. Um, and are, and are out, and we've noticed that already. Our new landlords that are just signing up on our website and saying, you know, I've got these properties. Can you help me? You know, can you, you know, look after them? Has gone through the roof. So we're actually getting that that benefit. We're going to start capitalising on that. So that's the first thing, um, you know. But then the other side is the sales side, which has been totally furloughed. Interestingly, it's we've had an eighty percent drop in sales. So we're still making sales, new sales, fresh new sales, even off that. So. You know, things are still happening, um, but what we're doing is we're working out how to phase back in and whether we bring everyone back from furlough or whether we bring the senior guys and then sort of work our way down because we think it's going to take about three months to get back up to full capacity um, of where yeah. we're selling at the same rate we were before. You know, um, Because I just think you know, you've had all these conversations where you were warming people up to a sale and now that's been stopped and a lot of people are going to wait, wait to see what happens with the property market. Yeah, and Emmanuel, oh, yeah. I know that you've had some uh, – thanks, Brett. I know, Emmanuel, you've – you know, on the developing side, people bringing deals to you now. What's the opportunity look like for, for people out there looking to start property development? Is it a good time to start? Should they wait and just wait for the, the, the herd to, to mass along and then miss out? You know, from, from your point of view, I know you've got loads of people who send you loads of deals. What's the landscape look like for you for the next two to three months or even now? Well, the landscape is beginning to open up. There's lots of opportunities in lots of different areas. However, what I would say, if you're just starting in development, unless you're doing with somebody that knows what they're doing, it's going to be a minefield. It's going to be walking a minefield. You're going to get your foot blown off somewhere where you don't know where you're treading. Yeah. So it, it, it's so important in the current market. We talked about over the last few weeks about spending this time to educate yourself, to start increasing your network, finding out how you want to invest, who you want to invest with. So development is a, a whole new level of investing in property. It's, it's the hardest discipline to actually learn, so you need to do it with somebody. But there's lots of other strategies that you can be taking advantage of right now in the current marketplace. So, you know, whether it be buy to let, rent to buy, you know, th th there's so many options. There's so many different strategies that you can use in addition to uh, property development. So if you want to learn property development, as I've said many times before, find somebody that's experienced uh, and go on the journey with them. They'll educate you. There's so many moving parts in the development that you just don't understand. I'm still learning every day after 25 years. So um, it, that's really important. But there are some great opportunities coming through. Either people that have actually uh, bought land that they can't complete, uh, they've, they've exchanged, yeah. you can't complete because the values have gone down. You've got people that have taken options on, on property. They've now got planning permission, but the values have gone down and they can't complete. And you also have developers at different stages of their project that may not be able to continue because they're funding and they've actually breached lenders' covenants. So there's, there's lots of different opportunities. But the way that you're going to do that and participate that is with people that are in that, that circle. They're going to be getting those opportunities on a regular basis. Um, I'm part of developers boardroom. We've just put 12 people together uh, of sophisticated developers. We've actually got a fund of 30 million between 12 of us specifically to buy acquisitions together or to introduce uh, uh, opportunities so we can take advantage of them very quickly. So that's what I mean about using the downtime to mm. think more creatively about things that you might have done previously to take advantage of opportunities that will certainly be presenting themselves. And I think they're going to be presenting themselves three, four months down the line, not necessarily now, because we're still in the lockdown. We still don't understand yeah. where the market is. I was on a, a video conference yesterday with a, an economic, uh, analyst. Um, Brett sent me a few bits and pieces. They all have different opinions where they think these things are going to be based on a U shape, or based on a V shape, you know. So there's so many different things. Nobody has a crystal ball, and if they did, they would be a millionaire. But one of the things that I found really poignant over the last few days was Warren Buffett. He's in cash. 
he's in cash now. He knows more about investing than anyone on the planet. You know, he sold all of his positions in the airlines. He's put everything into cash because he knows opportunity is going to be knocking very loudly very soon. And he wants to be able to pounce. And the word is pounce, even at his tender age, mm. <laughs> uh, on opportunities yeah. that are going to present themselves. So you, you need to be in cash. And, Do you know what? You know, that, that's that's on. interesting that he, that he dropped everything. I mean, he had 10% of Delta Airlines and, and, and a high percentage of other, you know, some of these airlines are the biggest in the world and the States, and he's just dropped his position in those completely and bailed out. So, you know, I know that he does a lot of, you know, I know that he does a lot of due diligence and he bases a lot of things on, uh, you know, just about everything on facts. So see, you know, if the world does change its work, the way it travels, if airlines do change, I mean, you know, Branson and Virgin, I know for a fact from friends in Australia that he's trying to get a bailout from the Australians and, and get cash fund for Virgin Blue or whatever it is. And they've, they've basically turned around and said, well, why should we fund a business that's not even a local Australian business? And, you know, he's trying to also get, I don't know, three billion or whatever it is funding in, in the UK. But I'm not sure if he's burnt bridges with people. I know that he ended up suing the NHS because he didn't, you know, he didn't get a, a, a tender or whatever it was. So it, it, it could be a, a turn for the travel industry. I don't know what's going to happen with airlines. And that's something that I'm just completely in the dark about because, you know, that will have an impact on service accommodation and how we position ourselves and well, within the hotels as well and who we start to promote to. But the, mar- the market will recover. And there's a saying, especially Richard Branson, mm. be nice to the people on the way up because they're going to be people you meet on the way down. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and, and if you have that philosophy, you know, the NHS have been great. You know, the UK has been amazing for Richard Branson. For, so, so there's a lot of stuff that's bitter taste in lots of different areas. And, you know, when you're at a very high point, the UK government, not just the UK government, the UK press certainly like to shoot you down. They like you when you're an underdog and they cheer you all the way till you get to the top. And so you get to the top, they want to knock off your perch. So that's a mentality that we have in, in the UK. Mm. So the, the, there will be some casualties in the airlines. Uh, and short term, I think the, the prices will come down. Long term, they'll probably go up because they want to mm. get the activity going. But there will some, be some casualties. And going back to Warren Buffett, you know, he, he looks for undervalue. So, you know, we talk about distressed or below market value property. He looks for companies that are undervalued where they currently are. And he does that based on his knowledge and his research. And that's what we're doing in property. We look for opportunities yeah. where we can add value or something that's undervalued. I mean, I heard on the radio the other day that they were saying that, you know, to, to get the airlines back to normal, that they're looking at anything from, you know, two to four years. So I suppose for him to have his money tied up in something for two to four years and the amount of money that he probably has got tied up, he'd rather put that into something, point, you know, that, that something like a cardo, for example, online shopping at the moment, you know, that is just yeah. through the roof. So stuff, yeah, massive stuff like increase, that. Yeah. You know, on, on, a, on a more property based thing, actually, to be fair, one of the good things I heard uh, this week, a couple of a couple of lenders have put their line to values back up and are lending again, which is good news. That's right. I think yep. One of the good things about um, our position now opposed to 2008, 2009 is the banks were they had very little core capital, one to two percent last time coming into it. Now they've got over 15 percent. So actually they've got. Um, they've lowered the, the threshold they need, so they've got more cash than they, they need, which means they can lend. Um, but also, it also gives an indication that if they're prepared to give 75%, you know, um, loan to values again and go back to what it was before, that they've got a, le- a level of confidence in the marketplace, which is good, you know. And yeah, so, yeah, I agree. You know, there's plenty of doomsayers, but I think a lot of the doomsaying is, you know, US centric. Um, UK, I'm pretty confident, actually, to be fair. You know, I feel um, the same way, actually. I'm, I'm fairly confident over the next two to three months that things are just going to, you know, we're going to have a little mini boom to get us back on track. Especially I think, in the property we'll world. Be, I, I think uh, come uh, July 1st, we'll be in recession, um, without a doubt. But yeah, it's how long so, that lasts, I guess. Yeah, well, honest, yeah recession, I, short term. I, I think we are very lucky in the UK that this has come at this period of time where we're going to be hitting the summer months. 
if we were in winter months, it would be far, far, far more severe where people can't yeah. get out. They can't have the sunshine. <laughs> they can't walk yeah. around. I think we're very lucky. In fact, there's a plane going over here. They're back on track. It's Richard. It's Richard. Well, with an escape well, radio in. control one. <laughs> <laughs> to see Warren, buy my airline. It's really important as a, as a country and as a nation, we don't talk things down. Because people tend to, you know, that's why I called it, you know, I did it with Brett, the BBC, the big black, big black cloud. You know, yeah. the news and information is so dire and it's, it's not reflective it's of what things are. And, you know, instead of trying to pick holes with the government all the time, why not applaud them for a lot of the things they've done? Everybody makes mistakes. Yes, you know, hindsight is a wonderful thing. They could have done so much more. But you can't change the past. You can only look back at the past and say, what can I do in the future? What else can I do from now to make things better? That's what we need to focus on. How do we make things better? Looking back is not going to do anything. You can't move forward if you're looking in the rearview mirror the whole time. So it's really yeah, important that right. we... That, yeah, I was going to say, if you're sitting there in fear, even right now, um, you need to go out there and find the real data and the facts and really come up with a strategy for your business. And if that means it's the same business as it was, fantastic. If that means it's you've got to pivot slightly, if that means you know you've got to totally you know get rid of that business and start a new one, well you know fine. Um, but I think you know there's I do think there'll be changes. I don't think the changes will be as radical as everyone as certain people in the media might be saying. I think we will get back to travelling. I think we will. The question will be how we do that and when we do that. Um, one of my mates actually um, works for a, um, a a certain island down south beside Australia as our tourism. And so talking to him about how they're looking to open back up the tourist routes and that sort of thing, Australia and New Zealand are actually looking to open up already. Um, so they're talking about it already, um, between, you know, travel between the country. The question will be what other countries you can travel to and the trust and, the, you know, that, that'll be really, you know, the determinant of how airlines bounce back, I guess. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but well, it's, boys, it's, it's, all, it's all very positive. Um, from what I can hear, if I was an outsider listening to our conversations, um, for all, all the all the listeners out there, please do stay positive. There is a lot of opportunity coming our way. There's a lot of opportunity out there now. Some of you with inexperience in property may not be able to identify that, but you've heard from Emmanuel, 25 years experience. Um, Brett, kind of getting towards that. Jimmy and myself. So you've got multiple years of experience here and we are, we're not just saying this, you know, because we're not selling anything here. We are saying this because this is how we genuinely feel that the, you know, HMO market will change. It will have another big, um, I think that we'll have a good run for HMOs over the next 12 months. Um, simply because of, because of, you know, these, these things that have happened with the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, will change the way you know, people's habits are and how they live and that type of stuff and trying to condense things into into smaller properties and getting rid of ones that they don't really need because they don't need the excess. Um, I mean, if you've got a 20-bedroom house, you can only live in one. Why have a 20-bedroom house? Um, turn it into an HMO. But uh, service accommodation, it's 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 changing. But, you know, I'm, I'm along, I guess, the, the lines of what you're saying, Brett, is that and the manual too is that things will get back to normal. Don't know how long it will take, but it will get back to normal. People will revert back to what they know. It becomes your instinct. And that's what you do. However, like Emmanuel referred to, if you if you weren't you know that happy with how you're progressing in life and financially or 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 with your knowledge of whatever it is that you're interested in, your passion. Now is the time to educate yourself while you've, you know, don't get bored. Use this as an opportunity to to learn about or find your passion. There may be something that, you know, you might not have your passion. Find it. Think about it. And you've got this time to do that. So please don't waste your time. Don't use this as a holiday because it's it's a perfect opportunity to keep pushing. So, boys, anything else before we wind up? We've, it's been quite a good long podcast, this one. Enjoy the sun. Not to finish, I, yeah. <laughs> I don't mean to finish on a negative note, but I was just going to say too, the one thing I think that we will um, experience, because it's all good to say everything's going to be rose and dandy, I think because we're spending so much, or borrowing so much money as a government, 
we're going to pay for that. And we'll pay for that through either increased taxes or interest rates, inflation, you know, so inflation, which will raise interest rates. So, you know, potentially that's something we'd look at. But I, I think that's at least two years away. So right now, I don't think that's the thing to worry about. You know, I know I had a conversation yesterday and it's like, oh, no, we're going to have interest rates are going to go through the roof and, you, you know, shouldn't be doing anything. And I'm kind of like, there's no impetus for that right now. I think it is going to be at least two years when we're the other side of the virus, you know. But yeah. Yeah, interest rates. I mean, any, any, any increase in interest rates for a year or two or three, I think, would, would definitely... I mean, if we do go into recession, well, I think uh, into recession, which I think is inevitable, uh, we're yeah. just going to have a double dip with the recession, yeah. and it will. Yeah, I mean, we're at a record, you know, below one percent here in the UK. If that were to double, I mean, that that would be catastrophic for a lot of people, and um, I think it would, yeah, be be worse than the coronavirus. I think if they start doing that. Which I know that they, they know that they can't do. It's just, yeah, yeah that would be absolute economic suicide it's anyway. It's all over the edge, yeah. <laughs> oh, if, if, yeah, if, it, it would if, be worse. If, if Colonel Phillips can raise over 30 million in just over three weeks, just by showing the spirit that we had when we went through the wall, walking around his garden to give positivity and a light at the end of the tunnel, each and every one of us can do so much more. This is a man that is 100 years old, to coming to the end of his life, but his sheer determination, spirit, his zest for life, and what he's been able to choose has been nothing but magnificent. And each and every one can look at him and put a, a hand on our heart and say, we have so much more that we can contribute to to the whole country, to the whole nation. We have things that we can do that can serve and, and give us a positivity. And that's what we're doing here today. And hopefully people will listen to this and they'll see that, that there is so much more that we all have and so many more opportunities if we're resourceful. No, I was just going to say, what a way to turn around the country to go from the negative environment that Brexit was to what has actually yeah. been a really positive, you know, um, time. You know, it really has been impressive, you know, and, and the UK has really come together, which is awesome, yeah. you know, and if we can yeah. keep this up and, if, you know, wow, you know, we can do amazing things. So, yeah, good. Yeah, cool. I agree. All right, boys. Right, guys. Take Have it easy. Day. Take care. Enjoy the sunshine. Take care, Brett. See you, Brett. See you, guys. See you, guys. Bye-bye.